Have you ever lied about an odd hobby you have, or maybe your job status or your height, or even just avoided putting yourself in a situation in which you knew you were likely to fail? Why did you do that? There's a difference between assertive and aggressive. Assertive is just clear-cut communication. It's effectively expressing your feelings and your opinions without feeling anxious and angry. That's the key. It's middle ground between being bullied and being a doormat. The technical definition for assertiveness is aggressively self-assured. And so assertiveness to me really boils down to three things. Number one is confidence. Until you're at a place in your confidence development where you feel pretty good about yourself and know the value that you bring, you're never going to be able to be assertive because assertiveness and asserting yourself does require a degree of risk. And most of us are totally risk adverse, but with confidence and assertiveness, they go hand in hand. The second thing Thing you need to do is speak up. You need to find your voice. And this is something that is incredibly difficult to do if you're not used to it. And that ties into the third aspect, which is all confrontation does not have to be negative. Confrontation can be done in a positive way. It can be done in a negative way. And the way you go about it is key to everything. Self-assertiveness means the willingness to stand up for myself or yourself to be who I am openly, to treat myself with respect in all human encounters. This means that what you want, you're clear about. It means stand up for yourself and that you are in control of the environment. And then if people are playing games with you, you know how to deal with them appropriately. But you strive for optimal relationships and you expect people to treat you a certain way. But you don't wait for them to treat you that way. You let them know that's how you want to be treated. You communicate clearly that that's what you want. And if they reciprocate that, then you're ready to proceed. If they don't, you don't just stay in that relationship. You don't stay in that connection. You move on. When you become assertive and learn that skill, couple things happen. It actually decreases your stress and increases your confidence. Being assertive has probably been one of the hardest things that I've had to learn for myself, but it's been one of the most beneficial. When I started standing up for myself is when things changed. It's hard. It's not easy. And hard work, it's okay. Don't run from it. There is absolutely no reason to be scared. It's hard. When you start doing it, it's going to feel like you're going to be sick. And afterwards, all the adrenaline, you're going to feel nauseous. But I'm telling you, you do it a few times, it gets easier. You deserve it. Because there's nobody that's going to hand you anything. You need to go out there and grab it. Have you ever lied about an odd hobby you have, or maybe your job status or your height, or even just avoided putting yourself in a situation in which you knew you were likely to fail? Why did you do that? Short answer, because you were embarrassed. Embarrassment comes from trying to control how other people perceive you. So instead of just showing the world your nerdy hobby, say that you collect Beanie Babies, you go, I don't want people to think I'm a dweeb and pretend that you don't have one. The same process plays out with hobbies as it does with mistakes that we've made, areas in which we're weak, and areas in which we might get publicly rejected. We hide what we don't want people to know about us. We conform to what other people would like us to be. But it doesn't have to be the answer because there is another more empowering mindset. Instead of focusing on other people's perceptions and feeling embarrassed about what they may think, focus on whether or not you live up to your own values. For instance, if you do have a killer Beanie Baby collection, you obviously value something about it. Maybe it's the nostalgia, or maybe it was just a quirk that started when your grandma gave you one 20 years ago. Either way, if you value your own opinions, you won't try to hide the collection no matter what anyone else thinks of it. Or maybe you have a crush that you're thinking of asking out. Focusing on other people's perceptions of you would stop you dead in your tracks. After all, what if other people found out and laughed at you for getting turned down? But what if you instead focused on your own values, like doing the courageous thing or being honest even when it's uncomfortable? You would ask that person out. Now maybe you'd go on a date and maybe you wouldn't, but either way, you'd have lived up to your own values. And no matter what anyone else said or did, you could feel proud of yourself. The point is that when you focus on living up to your own values, you never have to feel embarrassed again. It doesn't matter whether you trip up an escalator, get fired from a job, beat up in a fight, or blown off by a girl or a boy that you like. None of that stuff is pleasant, but you don't need the double penalty of being embarrassed by those things. Your attempts to live up to your values are all that matter, so take responsibility, try to correct course, and move on. 
And if you have traits that embarrass you, whether it's your looks, your height, your age, well, you can't control those things and you can't live up to a value that you can't control. So even though you might not like something about yourself, own it. You'll immediately feel relieved when you accept yourself the way you are. The point is to get clear on your values, then live in line with them. Let other people's perception of you fade into the background noise. There are 7 billion people with 7 billion different opinions. You cannot please them all. So when you take feedback from others, focus on doing the right thing rather than the thing that pleases everyone else. In short, stop trying to be okay by everyone. Stop trying to control the opinions of strangers. Instead, figure out your values and live by them. Be your unadulterated self all the time, regardless of the audience. Make mistakes, fail publicly, get laughed at. You've got nothing to lose. And as long as you're trying to do the right thing, you've got no reason to ever feel bad about it. Own your screw ups, your weirdness, your unpopular actions, and you're free. For all the things that are said about being assertive in terms of tone of voice and body language, I think it all starts in your head. You've got to get your head right first uh, and ask yourself, what do I want to achieve in what I'm going to say, in the situation I'm going into, and what sort of words am I going to use to say it? The body is pretty much a servo mechanism that follows what your head tells you to do. So you need to be thinking, why am I doing this? What do I want to achieve? So getting your head right is about recognising what you want, but also recognising that the other person has a point of view and a right to have and to express that point of view. So there needs to be a balance about what you want and recognising the other person as well. Because assertion is not about overriding the other people, it's not about being dominant, it's not about getting your own way, it's about expressing your own point of view and feeling comfortable that you've said what needs saying. We think then about uh, the words that we might use. Classically, we talk about I language. That's letter I. I need, I want, I believe, from my point of view, as I see things. And this is not about being arrogant. It's not an arrogant I. It's simply an ownership I. It's the I that says, I own these thoughts, they're mine. You may disagree. This is what I believe. This is what I need. Along with that then goes uh, the posture and the tone of voice. The posture needs to be one where you're being assertive, where you do have some uh, ability to gain eye contact with a, the other person, uh, and your posture is reflecting a degree of energy. The energy has to be there in the voice as well. And again, this comes from the mindset, comes from feeling confident and comfortable, that I know what I need, I know what I'm going to say, and that leads us to then the thought of rehearsal. Quite often the words won't come out right first time and there's no way you can take words back after they've come out of your mouth. The way to get around that is to play the words through in your head, maybe with a colleague or on your own, uh, just getting a feel for the flow of the words, the sense that you want to make at the point that's uh, in your head. In rehearsal too, you might think through a couple of uh, transactions there because you'll get a response one of the things that's good about uh, people you know is that they are predictable. So you'll say something and you'll think, oh, I knew, I knew they'd say that. Okay, if you know they'll say it, then try thinking about the response you'll make. Allow them to say what they want to say. Acknowledge it. I understand. And then repeat your point of view. Don't get into the um, yes, but thing. Very easily, your first assertive phrase might turn into an argument when they make their response and you go, yes, but... And then you get yes, but, no, but, yes, but, no, but. And that doesn't help anyone. This is an acronym borrowed from the author Wayne Levine. It stands for non-negotiable, unalterable terms. Basically, your boundaries. When you find yourself stuck in an uncomfortable position, ask yourself, what are the most important things to me in this situation? What do I absolutely refuse to compromise? Your nuts should include something broad, like my health, or something specific, like my A average in biology. Either way, once you know what your priorities are, it'll be easier to fight for them. Be simple, honest, and direct. Don't be passive aggressive or coy. It's annoying. If a waiter brings you a kale salad and you ordered a cheeseburger, don't wait until the end of the meal to under tip. Have him send it back. If you're honest and direct, rather than waffly and underhanded, things are more likely to work out in your favor. 
At the very least, you've done yourself a favor by making your needs known. Fake it till you make it. If you act assertive, you will start feeling assertive. So, how do you know to do that? Well, use your body language and your voice to make your presence known. Practice good posture and speak in an authoritative volume. Please do not touch anything on my desk. Don't thrust your shoulders forward or slump. You look like you're apologizing for yourself. Do straighten your back. Stick your chest out. Breathe evenly and deeply. Don't dart your eyes about. It's gonna look like you've got something to hide. Pro tip, if you're nervous about maintaining eye contact, look at someone's nose or forehead. You'll seem more engaged and in control. My life does not belong to others, and I'm not here on this earth to live up to someone else's expectations. You are here to fulfill your purpose, to live out your desires. And as long as your de desires don't hinder or mess somebody else up, by all means, you should be going for it. And if somebody else is trying to take you in a different direction, which is not in a direction that you want to go, it's up to you to get yourself out of that situation. It's up to you to have a conversation with that person and say, hey, maybe you want me to go down this direction. I don't really want to go down this direction. I want to go down this other direction, which might be um, a variation of the direction that you're going, or it might be this total other direction. Um, would you be interested in coming with me in this direction? If you don't, that's okay, because that's the direction I'm going in. And you know, I'll always respect you and I'll always um, support you in any way that I can. But I choose not to go down this direction that um, you and I were initially going down or you want me to go. I'm not going to project that anger that I feel towards them in the conversation. I'm just going to go and have a conversation with them. I accept the fact that I don't want to have this conversation with this person. I accept the fact that I don't feel very positive right now. And I'd rather be doing something that's easy and relaxing and so forth rather than, this having this, rather than having this conversation. As I communicate to this person, it might not be totally smooth and optimal and you know, full of finesse, but I'm going to start the conversation. And because I come from a good place, because I know what I want in my life and I care about this other person, I want to see them have what they want. I'm just not the right match for them. I'm going to have this conversation with them. And I don't know how it's going to turn out. I don't know the steps along the way. You'll proactively make sure that you don't find yourself in that situation again. But the essence is that you're not afraid to have that conversation. You're not afraid to confront the person. And the more you do that, the more your self-esteem goes up. And the more self-esteem you have, the easier it is and the higher levels you go to. The more you raise your self-esteem, the more you'll find yourself around people that think rational that are more accepting. They have higher levels of self-esteem. So when you say to them, that this is what I want, and you're assertive, they'll either go along with you or they won't, and they won't resent you for it. You state the fact it's clear, cut, no opportunity for manipulation. So answer a yes, no question with a yes, no answer. Don't give a lot of extra information. That's a great place to learn the skill. It is a skill of becoming more assertive, but don't confuse it with aggressive. I'm not prepared to support that idea. So that's in Simple. a situation where Clear. opinions are kind of flying around? or Exactly. You might start with that. And one mistake we often make is we use qualifiers. And a qualifier, an example of that would be, um, well, you might think I'm crazy, but, <laughs> or I'd like pizza for dinner. Is that okay? Well, the minute you say okay, it opens up the door for the person to say, no, that's not okay. I want tacos for dinner. So when we use qualifiers, we actually diminish or decrease the importance of our opinion and our feeling concerned. So what you're doing is you're sticking with facts and focusing on behavior and not accusing. If you were to change that and say, um, you've been you come home late the last few nights you break the rules and I can't trust you that is accusing and it immediately moves us to from assertive to aggressive I mean, you need to build trust and then maybe at the end of the conversation say when you come in late then I have a hard time trusting you but don't don't blast out with that because it's gonna move it to aggressive all the broken record technique where you state something and then you just repeat it maybe you're having a discussion with the spouse over finances and you say I feel frustrated when we don't agree about our finances 
then they try to manipulate you and you come back to that same phrase I feel frustrated when we don't agree about our finances or you know you have um, a co-worker that wants to change a meeting and is trying to manip manipulate you there you might say I can you know I can meet you at one o'clock but two o'clock won't work for me today so it's clear and it's direct and it's sharing your feelings and opinions without the anger and the anxiety becoming involved because the more effective we are at this and it's a skill that mm -hmm. we have to learn mm -hmm. it's not built into our DNA like I say it will decrease your stress and increase your confidence and there's something very empowering about that so our top tips in being assertive first be clear about what you're trying to achieve get your mindset right and clarify your objective second think to use I language I need, I believe, I want, what I, what's important to me, those sorts of phrases. Third, rehearse. Rehearse the way you'll open, the phrase that you'll use, the words that you'll use, and rehearse responding to the way you might predict the other person will react. Figure out your priorities, be straightforward and honest, maintain good posture, eye contact and volume, and use I statements.